Hello. What's up, buddies? It is Flacco. Today is Tuesday, June 26. Four days, nigga. Four days. Four days until Chato drops June 30th. I want to shout out to anybody that uh, saw the fucking vlog yesterday and hit me up about questions and topics and shit they want to hear about the tape and blah, blah, blah. Um, shit, uh, let's just hop right into it. Let's see what, uh, questions you guys got. I got a couple from, <laughs> um, I'm going to start with this question. This is the, the greatest question I've probably ever heard in my life. Let me turn this down. Okay. So, Devo, MFG, shout out Devo, product of the dream in this bitch. Send me a question. I'm going to read it in its entirety. <laughs> oh, you niggas are so chat though. Okay. He said, don't you just hate it when you're walking up on stage and your dick busts out of the security of your sock? Hmm, that is a, a problem that I've been having ever since I started performing. I was like, man, like this elephant sized cock, how am I going to get the mobility I need to perform on stage? And I use a technique where I tuck my dick, the tip of my dick, in a tube sock. And it, it's, it's, it's this new way, next way shit. You just don't understand. <laughs> and he says, then you're tripping over it during your set. How do you feel when that sort of thing happens? Well, all jokes aside, um, I have a extraordinarily average penis. So this question is, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the fuck that feels like. That Ask a, a porn star, nigga. I'm not Mr. Marcus or Lexington Steele, you know what I mean? But God damn. I don't have that. I don't have a large dick performance problem on stage. If that's what you want. Okay, next question. My dude Wally West, syndicate nigga, South Bend. What up, Wally? He says, "How long did it take for you to get out of Twerk City?" I never left. I'm still trapped. Still trapped in Twerk City. And he said, "Where the fuck is A's dad?" Uh. Eddie's dad is, uh, I don't know what he's doing, honestly. Um, we don't really keep in contact like that. Um, but if you want to contact him or want to talk to him, uh, I can send you some information. I'll, I'll send you uh, some of his social network information. None of his personal shit, obviously, but. Shut up, ass! So. Um, yeah, 80s dad is doing his thing. Uh, I don't really know where he's at or uh, what he's doing, but if you want to get uh, in contact with him, hit me up. And I'll uh, send you some social network shit. Okay. Um, do I ever feel like the black Roger Klotz? Nigga, I got to look this up. Roger Klotz. Who's Roger Klotz? <laughs> Yo, Wally, I'm swinging on you next time I see you, but that's kind of a compliment. Okay, Roger Klotz is the infamous douchebag in uh, the animated series Doug. I don't know if you remember that shit. Klotz, you know, he had a kind of a right to be a douchebag. I mean, when you're wearing a leather jacket at the tender age of like 11 and 12 and with such an obtuse haircut, I mean, you're bound to break some rules. You're bound to not give a fuck about what people think about you. He was such a douche, though. Now, I love douchey characters in movies and cartoons. The douche is always the most interesting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I can't, I can't, can't believe I fucking forgot about Roger fucking Klotz. I feel honored that you think I am the black Roger Klotz. That nigga, he's off uh, 90 pills, though. His skin is very, very interesting. 
Very interesting, to say the least. But thank you, Wally. You know what I mean? Roger Klotz is a very interesting ass nigga for sure. God damn that haircut. Shit. What am I doing in my life? Okay. Next question. Where you at? It's from my mom. <laughs> she asks, what does it feel like to be a legend? Shit, I'll tell you when I when, when I become one. You know what I mean? Uh, mom, you have an uncanny ability to embarrass me. Damn it, mom. Damn it. But no, I'm not. I'm not a legend. I, I, I'm not. I don't really know how to answer that, mom. You, you really. Next time I see you, mom, I'm, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna do a 3D through a table on you. I, I'm not a legend yet, and I'm, I, I'm honored that you think that. I'm not a legend. I don't know what that feels like, and I feel like if there is a person at my level that feels like they're a legend, then there's some delirious ass motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not a legend until. I, uh, I'm not a legend until I personally, personally have Kanye West's phone number in my shit, and we're just, you know, sending pics back and forth of very, very based fucking clothing and music and shit. I'm not a legend until motherfucking me and Rick Ross are doing a push-up contest. Nigga, no, I'm not a legend until... I'm eating my breakfast on a helicopter ride to my other helicopter that's going to take me to my yacht, which is going to take me to a show, which is on another yacht. That's when I'm going to be a legend. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. All right. We got any more questions? Yeah. My man, Randall fucking Weaver. Old slime of mine. Fuck. Um, Ask me... Where you at, Randy? He asked me, yo, Flop, I got a question for your vlog. What's the hardest obstacle you've had to overcome musically? Ah. Uh, it's honestly never been the music that's been the biggest obstacle, and that's the fucked up thing. As you would think, the music side of the music would be the hardest. It's... It's not it at all. Actually, the hardest part, hardest obstacles about that shit is the promotional side, getting yourself out there, going to the next level, plateau. You know what I'm saying? That is the hardest thing for anybody who's serious about their craft because you're trying to figure out, you're trying to bridge quality with business. Art and business is very... Ooh, ooh. You're always gonna end up feeling a little dirty afterwards. So I think figuring out that it's more than the music uh, was the biggest obstacle for sure. For sure, you know what I'm saying? We I, I dropped five mixtapes, and you know, um, like I dropped five mixtapes, like just boom, 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 and I was like, what? Why are anybody fucking with me, man? Like. I don't understand why nobody's fucking with us. You know what I'm saying? It was the other side thing, the promotional, the marketing, you know, figuring out that the psychology of music, you know what I'm saying? That's just something I've neglected for a long time. So I'm finally coming in my own and realizing that, you know, it's uh, an evil that I'm, it's, I'm ready to, I'm willing to play the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to break rules, but I, <laughs> For the first time in my career, I'm like, I'm ready to play the game. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be some nigga on the sideline saying, oh, the game's stupid. Oh, this is dumb. You know, and not even play. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be the nigga that's in the game and losing, but compromising his artistic integrity. You know what I'm saying? I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So it's that bridge. I think. Uh, to paraphrase everything, everything but the music is the hardest shit about the music. You know what I'm saying? Everything else, as far as musically and shit, bro, like, it's, I don't know, man. It, it's not like you're trying to top yourself. 
I I push myself internally. So, you know, there is nobody there's I don't have anybody over my ear or, you know, over my shoulder, you know, making sure I'm recording every day or making sure I'm uh, coming up with promo or, you know, I don't have anybody to look over my shoulder like that, you know, besides, you know, my, my niggas, my fellow artists. So it's all in an intrinsic, you know, driving shit. I'm sorry I'm being wordy, but that is a good question, you know, a little broad, but it's a, it's a good ass question. Um, but yeah, once I'll tell you. Once you figure out, you'll you'll be pissed the moment you're like, man, my music is fucking undeniable. What the fuck is going on? That's the moment when you really got to step back and be like, okay, there are other variables that apply to music. So, thanks, Randy, for the fucking question. It was a, a good question. I mean, I like questions like that. Um, shit. We got another question popping up. Okay. Okay. But while this question is loading, remember June thirtieth. Make sure you slime bags. Check out our YouTube channel. Check out uh, the new music video we just dropped. Fuck your dumb stupid party. Uh, shot and edited by you know the board crew. Shout out OJ. Shout out Tyler. Shout out Mike. Shout out Tim. Shout out Dusty. Uh, shit, man. Like. I really dig that video because if you didn't notice, like you, you probably didn't notice, but that was all impromptu. Uh, we had like a brief, kind of like a a skeleton what we want to do, but everything was impromptu. You know what I'm saying? The <laughs> even the clothes I was wearing, you know, like everything was impromptu. That's what that's the type of shit I like to make, you know. But uh, check out the video. Make sure you check out the website. We're, we're constantly updating and uh posting our shows and all that dumb shit you know so uh if you're ever the moment you're like where's the next show <laughs> hit the website the moment you're like when well, you drop your next project hit the website the moment you're like oh, what are you guys gonna do next hit the website we are bored us uh, it's the easiest way I can can put it. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you follow our Facebook page. I know I'm slapping you over the head with, you know, a promo. But we're not whack niggas. So when we tell you to go to the website, it's a dope website. Um, developed and managed by a uh, board crew member, Tal Hoyt. Very talented young man. Very soft, tall young man. Very soft, very... Very soft nigga. Very soft. Tender. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. He's an incredible talent. So, you know, we put a lot of hard work in this shit. So, if anything, hopefully it inspires you to make your own shit, you know? So, oh yeah, a couple of updates. I'm kind of, I've kind of fallen in love with this type of shit. You know, like vlogging and, and you know, kind of just talking to you, you know, because it's a different, it's a different animal when you're talk, trying to talk to me before, or after a show, or, or you're trying to gauge me for my music, so, you know, this is the bridge, and honestly, I'm developing uh, my own show, so be on the lookout for fucking Flacco, you know what I'm saying, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to call it, it's just basically going to be uh, I don't know, it's a vlog, it's, I'm gonna stream, uh, you know, my gameplay, my video game shit, uh, stream my studio activity, uh, possibly stream, uh, my masturbation sequences, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's in the works right now, uh, all my gamers, I'm building a, uh, I don't know, like, I, I wanna say community, so if you're a gamer and you take it seriously or you just, you know, you're really into it, the community, um, send me an email. Send me your email or send me, send me your email with your gamer tag, what system you're on, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to build this, this list so when I start uh, streaming via Twitch, you know, I can hit you guys up and let you guys know when I'm streaming, why I'm streaming, what I'm streaming, that type of shit. Okay. Pause. Woo! Woohoo! 
It is 12.24 p.m. God damn. I've been up since 7 o'clock this fucking morning. Working hard. You know, whole team's working hard. Trying to trying to push shit. Um, I can't let this shit slide. Fucking. We got to talk about LeBron opting out. I know I'm not the biggest sports guy. Period. I love sports, but I'm not. I don't really follow it too deeply. Uh, I you know I'm ignorant about this shit, but honestly, like, have you quickly noticed that as soon as that nigga opted out, for your, for those who don't know, who apparently don't have any access to the internet, LeBron opted out of his contract, which makes him a free agent. I don't know how to. I don't know how to take it. It's just like the first, the they win two in a row, and then the the year they don't win a championship, he's just like, oh man, well, well, you know, yeah, man, gotta get the buckets, gotta get the rings, and he's gone. And as soon as he's gone, eighty percent of these Heat niggas, the snap, the snapback sales of Miami Heat is about to deplete. I rhymed accidentally. That's how deep this shit is. I, the, the, and, and they're immediately bandwagon. Like, I've never seen people just immediately be like, well, wherever, you know, I was never, I wasn't a Heat fan, I was a LeBron fan. I was like, okay, okay, okay. But that's here now. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Okay, that's not my place. Because I'm not the biggest fan. I just like the, the psychology and the sociology of this shit. How people react. It's just so crazy to me that. The person that taught you how to fucking read and write doesn't even make a quarter of what these niggas do. I just don't understand. I love sports, but when your team wins, this is my thing. If your team wins, if your fucking favorite player wins, what tangible thing do you gain from that? Tangible, not not pride, not fucking <laughs> bragging rights until the next season. What tangible thing do you gain from sports? That's my question. That's my question of the day. What tangible fucking reward do you get from sports? From from professional athletes. Your favorite team. If you were a San Antonio Spurs fan after the game, would it would were you like, oh man, I gotta check my bank account. They won. I I just not my cup of tea. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's that's fine. Leave me questions, leave me comments. You know what I mean? I wanna talk about shit. Uh, I, this is just shit that it kinda bothers me. I think it's it's kinda weird. That's just my that's just my opinion. And I know niggas gonna be oh this nigga this nigga this nigga this nigga buddy calm down you know what I'm saying I fuck with sports I'm just saying priority wise shit is fucking stupid but I digress I digress I feel like I just the the ten niggas that listen to my shit that were really into sports and just like man fuck this nigga fuck this nigga Fuck this nigga. I don't mean to offend you, or maybe I do. I don't know. I just don't think it's that big a deal. It's not, I don't know. It's not my shit. But, let me talk about merch and... This question refuses to load. But let me talk about merch for a second. Um, We're in the process of acquiring a distributor. And a uh, a plug, basically a real fucking plug, not these fucking fake plugs. You niggas are shouting out in songs, but a real plug, a uh, connection that you know could take our merch game to the next level. So be on the lookout for that. I'm uh, probably gonna do some lanyards for Chet, though. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit she rock. You know what I mean? The lanyards. You know what a fucking. You know what a lanyard is. But you know, I want to do. Merch shit like that, because I feel like even though it's kind of 
I don't know, trinkety, I feel like it, it has a lot more shelf life than, say, I don't know, uh, flyers or stickers. You know what I'm saying? So be on the lookout for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my plug at CVS, nigga. I'm low. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you, baby. But yeah, man. Um, if you got any questions, anything you want to talk about, uh, like I said, I'm gonna be starting my YouTube channel, uh, show soon. Probably after Chet though. Um, I'm kind of developing right now. So if you, you, if you give a fuck what I have to I have to say, or you, you know, I don't know. If you think I'm somewhat interesting, be on the lookout for that shit. Be on the lookout for that shit. Be on the lookout for that shit. What the, what's the hand? The hand that girls do. We gotta. I got so much to talk about. Nigga, I got so much to talk about. We got so much. I have a lot of top. I just got a lot of shit that people don't think I have an opinion on that I actually do. Like you know, like Instagram is a god. I just. I, Instagram literally destroys my soul every day. We gotta start with this. What? What is going on? After the 50th bitch you see on your timeline doing that, you would think you would have a, a different approach to the peace sign. Or, I just don't get it. It just annoys me. Instagram itself annoys me. One is because everybody is a fucking philosopher. Everybody. Everybody. Every nigga's got the answer. Every nigga's got the juice. Every nigga's working. Every nigga's getting money. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got to sip my pokey juice. Ooh. But back to Chet, though. I'm going to go everywhere. Fuck it. Well, back to Chet, though. I'm going to tell you how many tracks is on there. Um, there are 22 tracks. 22 tracks. I realized in the past that a nigga has put out projects that are huge as fuck. And that's kind of my style. I, I just like a, a lot of bulk, you know what I'm saying? It kind of clunks the tape together. But with this with this particular project, I wanted to keep it shorter. And as soon as I said that, as soon as I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make it shorter, it, it got bigger and bigger. It started, I was going to be like, well, I'm done at, at eight songs. No, I'm done at 12 songs. No, I'm done at 15. No, I'm done at 20. So, you know, so the song, the, the tape is more manageable. It's more mixtape-ish. Length. It's 22 songs. It's a little over an hour to experience and shit. So, so for the niggas that have the the attention spans of 140 characters, you know what I'm saying? You should you you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And I always pride myself on making it entertaining enough that you you can go to each song and 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 enjoy yourself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, 22 songs, not that deep. Uh, I got another question. Okay, here we go. Um, what was my inspiration for the tape check, though? Uh, honestly, uh, if I want to be completely honest, uh, this time though, and it's weird. Like the last few projects, this has happened. Like I'll be, I'll be fucking around with uh, Tyler. Uh, my, I like to call him my hitman. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fuck around with artwork artwork the, my I always fuck with the cover art first on accident and for some reason that inspires the tape so Tyler came to me with the cover that you see now as my Ivy and shit um he kind of came up with he came up with it and we kind of fucked around with it and as soon as I saw the cover I was like man I know exactly what I want to do I know exactly how it's, how it's gonna feel so it's the it was the artwork. The artwork inspired me, um, and summer inspired me. Uh, I've never been able to put out a tape in summer. 
I mean, I wanted to do that shit with Alexander, but, you know, that shit didn't uh, pan out. I, I ended up taking a whole summer to finish it. So uh, this would be my first tape drop in the summer, and I wanted, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to feel like, no disrespect, I don't want it to feel like a Shwayze tape. I don't want it to feel like you're sipping a, a goddamn Sam Adams summer ale. You know, yeah, I, I just want it to feel uh, sweaty. Yeah, sweaty. So my inspiration came from uh, the artwork, so I appreciate that question. What else? Okay. Okay. Um, where did I come up with Met Coast? Uh, I have never. I didn't come up with uh, Met Coast. Uh, Met Coast was a conception by '80s Dad, aka Daniel Clevenger. Uh, he came to me, and we. We, I didn't even, uh, the first time he introduced it to me, I thought of it more of as a, as a song title almost, you know, and it became broader and we kind of, we just ran with it. You know I mean, it, it, it felt right. That's what I'm saying. It, it felt like it described where our friends of mine were. So Meth Coast was, was, was all 80s. It was 80s conception and uh, it was my inception. You know what I mean? I, uh, pushed it we both pushed it but you know I, I still believe it you know what I'm saying this shit is tied on my knuckles for life it's not a fucking a gimmick to me it's something I really believe in so and it's still alive Meth Coast is, is not dead you know if you fucked with the, if you fuck with the music if you fucked with the mythos Meth Coast is in here you know what I mean the legitimacy behind it is bored you know Meth Coast is where I'm, I am up here and up here you know, as far as my frame of mind and how I do shit, but bored is is the legitimacy. It's it's I don't know. It's it's the glue. It, it it's the the vehicle. So Meth Coast is not dead, and uh, Eddie started it. Um, okay, okay, okay. We got another question. What else you got? Uh, Okay. All right. Where did you get your? These are anonymous. This is looking like this is anonymous. Where did you get your name, Flocka? Um. Actually, it was a very loose, very loose nickname I, I got towards the end of high school by a couple friends. Uh, couple associates in school they happen to be Hispanic and uh, you know fl flacos mean skinny <clears throat> I didn't really it stuck with me a little bit but it wasn't something that I really like referred to myself as until I got to college and um, I don't know it just it was me you know what I mean so uh, it, it was just a, a loose nickname that turned into a frame of mind which is, is me now. So, um, and it was loosely inspired by um, Most Def, who used to call him so pretty Flacco. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's tatted on my neck. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a note to ASAP, no disrespect, but it it's it's not. Uh, Most Def definitely uh, coined that term, coined that phrase, and it really touched my heart. So it, it really resonated with me. So, you know, it's on my neck, and it's it's my name. So that's where I got it. Um, shit. I really, really, really just want to take the time to to thank everybody for for fucking with, for sticking by me, seeing my growth, our growth. Um, that shit is it, it's beyond words. I can't even can't even thank you enough. That shit means the world to me. Um, people that and this is the thing is that. If I ever, if this ever takes off, I'm going to be a bitter nigga. I'm going to be a really, I'm trying not to be, but I'm going to be a really bitter nigga. Um, we've been here for a while. You know, we've been in Indy, you know, doing this shit for about four years, almost five years. Um, and we had to claw to everything. Claw to everything, every fan. You know what I'm saying? We didn't get any fucking help 
from uh you know the gatekeepers within the city how how, how few and minuscule they are but the gatekeepers in the city or the state we didn't we didn't get help from that you know what I'm saying uh we got opportunities from artists you know what I mean people that fucked with us personally um so everything the little stuff that we have right now is because people believe you know what I'm saying we may have 50 fans but we got 50 of the most dedicated hardcore fans the type of fans you really want to have not these bandwagon niggas that a lot of niggas are going to turn into if this shit takes off oh it's always fuck with them yeah so I just want to thank you the day one motherfuckers that that really helped push this I know this is running long videos running long shoot 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 flacco shoot but you know I just want to uh answer the questions and shit and you know get a little drunk get a little based Ooh. Before I go, I just want to reaffirm that July 5th, after the ends Hoopla 2, which we'll be performing at, at the Hoosier Dome July 5th, we have another show right after that um, for my release. It's release party slash performance. Uh, we'll have that. We'll have the official uh, performance slots and, and lists and information for you really soon. But uh, you guys should definitely swoop uh, through, through. It'll be free. Uh, BYOB. Uh, it means bring your own beer. You know, bring your alcohol pretty much. Um, and it's, I really think that it'll be a special night. I've never done shit like this before. We did it. Uh, we did it uh, for for Tim's art god though, and as dysfunctional as it was, it was one of the most beautiful nights ever. You know what I'm saying? The fact that people came out. So be on the lookout for that July 5th. Just remember two fucking dates: June 30th and July 5th. 30th, 5th, 30th, 5th, 30th, 5th. And uh, shit, man. Until the next time. This is Flacco signing out, a.k.a. Dirty Bucket Hat, a.k.a. Greg Oden's Knees, a.k.a. Dirty Left Hand, a.k.a. AK Spray, a.k.a. Butterscotch Toffee, and I'm out. Check out weaboard.us, namaste. We out. Peace.